welcome back to the channel i hope you're having a great day so today interesting video we want to talk about um the slp simple ledger protocol that runs the uh tokenize or the, the tokens in association on the bitcoin cash network um we're understanding now that the development of the SLP DEX may be complete this month. So a lot of people have been anticipating um, with the uh, uh, great ability to tokenize almost anything on the Bitcoin Cash Network. Uh, with over 9,000 tokens now created, uh, these tokens are created for under 10 cents. It's, it's amazing. Um, a very record speed takes you under a minute and you're broadcasting over the chain um many have anticipated uh some type of trading decks and uh, they've been working diligently as i understand it on this decks and they believe they're going to be done uh sometimes this the month of october possibly right a high possibility of that so seems to be right around the corner so this may, in fact, be a game changer. Uh, the, the only thing I saw close to this, but wasn't as um, uh, you know, well ranked as Bitcoin Cash and had the, uh, um, you know, the entire history like Bitcoin Cash has, uh, was the, the Waves Network, which had a similar thing where there was a lot of people tokenizing. Um, and for some reason, Waves, I was hoping it would have took off, just didn't take off. It just didn't make it. I uh, didn't get the necessary adoption, although it had some great uh, development. And I think Waves just have missed the very important uh, need to onboard. Uh, uh, the problem with a lot of projects is they believe that if they just build great technology, that's going to be enough and people are going to be satisfied with just that. And that doesn't seem to be the case. It, it seems to uh, now be a combination of whether it's centralization, decentralization, boots on the ground, uh, there's just a lot going into uh, making projects work nowadays and unfortunately just building um, the technology I don't think is any longer enough and, and that kind of uh, brings us to our video today which is going to talk a little bit about CFI now if you're not familiar with CFI it stands for centralized finance uh, and we generally hear about the other one DeFi that many believe is going to be a groundbreaker but we're going to also discuss a little bit why CFI may be overlooked and some of the important uh, uh, things we need to take note of with centralized finance, right? Um, and, and why, especially in the initial phases of cryptocurrency, why these type platforms may be uh, necessary. So uh, we're looking here on uh, Bitcoin, um, MYK, it's on the memo. And what memo uh, dot cash is this is built on top of the Bitcoin Cash Network. It's very interesting, and um, it has basically where people receive uh, tokens from various projects, and, and it's really cool because it has a Twitter-like social media feel. And we spoke a lot about the importance of social media, so people are able to create their tokens for little or nothing. Anybody can do it. Get on here, uh, build up a community, uh, send your tokens from tweet tip people, and, and so on and so forth on their posts. Uh, tweet the tweets, broadcast over the the blockchain. You know, uh, uh, you know, post to post, and, and so on. And as you can see, even though Memo dot Cash with all of this uh, integrated into their kind of social media type situation, even though they don't have uh, a standard uh, trading uh, exchange decks like many of us uh, are accustomed to and like to see, there still exists this ability to uh, sell your uh, tokens and buy them. And it's this very kind of NFT like feel because, you know, everyone is kind of, you can make it kind of unique to, uh, the person who's buying and you can make it specifically to a buyer as uh, um, you know unlike what you get in the standard uh, decks of somebody's putting up a wall of sale orders or buy orders or, or what have you you gotta uh, move around that right and this is kind of different in some aspects I like what can be done with this disability but on the other hand it doesn't uh, I think encourage a, a lot of traders to get involved and, and for there to be a lot of volume. So I don't think it's really just set up for that. But it's interesting, uh, nevertheless, and I don't know, maybe in the future, they may just link off to 
one of these decks is, uh, that's coming out. Like they could probably just link this to a deck. You can send your tokens right to the decks and, and, and something like that. And, and you'll be able to trade there. So I can see that something like that happening. I'm not even sure if the, the people who develop memo are, are, um, you know, are related to the development going into the decks that's coming out. But I, I think that would be awesome if they did that. Now, I want to talk about also with that very exciting news, Bitcoin MYK launching its centralized finance and what exactly that means, because this can also be, I think, a game changer for us as well. So uh, let's talk about that. All right. So over here on the Steam uh, blockchain, uh, their decks um, where you see our cryptocurrency as well, Bitcoin and MYK again. So this is very important too when we're discussing what's going to be happening with centralized finance that we're going to be uh, coming out here with uh, very shortly. Uh, we estimate to be launching sometime this month or early next month. Um, and uh, it's probably going to run on uh, NFT-like uh, kind of, uh, token. Now, let's talk about that a little bit. Bitcoin MYK um, is a basically a universal bridge cryptocurrency that provides universal basic income. Now, uh, a lot of you in recent times, uh, even though this is a very old concept of her universal basic income uh, uh, in your perspective, countries may have been granted it or in the United States, we received uh, what some uh, believe to be a type of low level universal basic income with $1,200 going out to everybody and, and they want to do more rounds and, and so on. Um, but it's very important, uh, a very important topic, a, a very a topic that a lot of people are considering uh, specifically with the state of not only where the economy has been, but where many believe it's going here in the near future. So, this is going to be something that's going to be important to everybody, your grandmother, your your mailman, your, your just average everyday people. And I think that's what cryptocurrency misses. What's happening with cryptocurrency is we're creating a space for a specific group of people, right? Uh, these are very intelligent, nor, not normal people <laughs> that's doing cryptocurrency, right? Um, the average person isn't understanding cryptocurrency or, or doesn't see the importance of it, right? And so what's happening in this space is it's a very geeky, nerdy-like element that's getting excited about technology that people don't understand and that they don't use. And um, uh, this very small group of people in a, in a um, situation like w what you get with DeFi, uh, about 400,000 people, which is a lot of people. But this very small group of people, they're, you know, they're just having the balls, you know, trading money back and forth, some making money, some losing everything. Um, but this isn't really, I think, the best use of this technology, right? So the big moves in cryptocurrency, the really big moves, you know, we're not talking about, uh, you know, your coin that's out of the top 10 or out of the top 20 and uh, uh, ranked over 100 and making a little bit of, you know, money here and there, you're, you're hoping it'll moon. But the real big players in cryptocurrency are, are, are something like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And what's happening there, where the, where the major money is coming in, it's coming in from institutions. It's not coming in from retail investors like us. It's coming in from institutions that are going to be uh, more so operating in a custodial capacity like Fidelity, right? So what Fidelity, Fidelity is doing is, right, it's creating uh, a situation now where it can have custodial uh, accounts where the average person who doesn't know anything about cryptocurrency, who doesn't want to get involved and get wrecked as a result of not being knowledgeable about it, they're, they're going to manage this for them. Now, to many of us, this is anti-cryptocurrency, uh, right? And I can agree with you on that unless there are certain things put in place that maybe uh, through a system is, is more educational people and, and and helping people to to manage through cryptocurrency but kind of designed in a way for them to still take advantage of the more important aspects of what they're hoping to achieve in cryptocurrency and so for example what i mean by that is that it's just inclusion right to to have 
true decentralization, first you got to have a lot of inclusion, you got to have a lot of participants. That doesn't really happen in cryptocurrency because of the, the, the learning process is so difficult. Uh, the other problem is when you're starting to get hands on the custodial in, in, in that sense, um, it can be, uh, you know, very things can come up like security laws and legal issues and things like that. So you have to be very careful with how that's done. So we want to talk a little bit about Bitcoin and MYK, how through some natural process, we might be able to take advantage of uh, a certain situation only unique to our cryptocurrency that may make a lot of sense to people. So we have to start at the beginning. The first part is our cryptocurrency is free to everybody, right? It's a universal basic income. So anybody could go in, get it free. They can uh, get our wallet, download our wallet, and they'll start to get our cryptocurrency. Um, due to its deflationary nature and it burns against transactions, so mostly everybody who's getting the coins are going to hold some value, right? They're, they're, they're. Now, you're able to, in a sense go in, get these universal basic income, our, our coins free. And you could then sell them on the market and you could buy into our centralized finance um, coin that is more likely gonna be an NFT coin, right? So how it's gonna work is, as you can see, we just jumped from one exchange to another and we're probably on several exchanges now, probably on five or six exchanges or something like that. Uh, the thing is, um, because our product is a, a multi-chain cryptocurrency, it's creating a natural arbitrage. So if you don't know what arbitrage is, it's when you go from one exchange to another, there are slight price variances, right? Now, a professional trader or somebody who knows cryptocurrency markets or, or who knows how to trade fairly well, they oftentimes will be able to just go, okay, I see this cryptocurrency exists on this exchange. It's at a different value, it's a different price. I can take that and I'm able to then sell it for more over here, buy it cheaper on here. I can repeat the process and I make a profit, right? Some people know how to do that, uh, but there are a great amount of traders who probably either don't understand that, don't want the um, sitting up there watching and doing this and, and, and they're missing moves when maybe they should be taking advantage or maybe they're just not knowledgeable about where the market goes or maybe it would be great if there was a system that was more uh, uh stable high liquid and 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 more safe to trade in it's, it's as safe as can possibly be and so that's what our centralized finance system is attempting to do now there are a few things you need to understand why this is going to be so much different than probably any idea of centralized finance or or any element of DeFi in it. Whereas DeFi and centralized finance, and many times these are entities totally outside of the, the investments they're making or the assets they're making. And they're probably going from one to another. They're trying to uh, catch the, the dagger of Damocles, right? You know, that's the old Greek story about daggers uh, falling from the ceiling and so on and so forth um randomly and so a lot of times uh, they don't know you know what's happening they're just kind of diversifying their portfolio and you know a cryptocurrency the entire market can tank on you right you just don't know um uh, where this is a little different is this is completely internal to create a liquidity pool for bitcoin myk now how it's going to work it's going to be quite interesting um it's basically going to be able to um, um, uh, basically, um, okay, because it's going to be internal, Bitcoin and YK is basically going to be able to take advantage of the many different chains that we're trading on, right? These are different blockchains. Remember, there's a multi-chain cryptocurrency in different communities, right? In different, uh, platforms. So what could happen is not only that the the price there could be price variances, these price differences from um, one uh, one price of a Bitcoin MYK on an on another blockchain, but the blockchains itself could become either a great deal more valuable or a great deal less valuable, right? And so that means its perspective uh, base coin that's it's being traded against 
could reduce the value of, of the Bitcoin MYK on another network. Now, here's the cool thing about Bitcoin MYK, because everything is inner, uh, uh, interoperable, right, through the Bitcoin MYK, the supply is the same, right? So there's never a creation of more coins from one blockchain to another, right? These are the same coins that are being reflected on these other chains, meaning that they are being burnt to represent those other chains or that they are uh, basically uh, going to only be so many sent over there on that chain that could be traded on that chain. Uh, and overall, it's still going to be the same supply of coins, right? Um, keep in mind also that against the growth rate and the scalability by being on these a variety of chains and being exposed to uh, their, uh, their projects, their, through their, their base coins, um, that uh, through the scalability and growth, uh, the, the, const the tokens are going to be constantly burnt, right? So it's going to make it a lot easier for the whole value to that game theory and tokenomics. The other thing important that I, I think a lot of people miss is that if we think about something in, 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 re in reference, like if you're looking at something like Euro Finance, or you're looking like at uh, Sushi, as it were, and I'm hearing they're having many issues. I'm hearing the founder uh, has uh, talked about quitting due to some bug early on. Uh, Sushi, of course, there was a big debacle with them. So what's happening with many of these decentralized uh, finance uh, projects is, um, you know, they're trading the value of these, uh, using this arbitrage across the markets. To, um, but oftentimes when that happens, um, you know, you don't really know what projects are going to do what and who are going to perform what. So with us, it's a kind of unique situation because it's the same cryptocurrency, but there are differences based on the communities they're in and the different platforms they're in. So I think it's more relative to look at Bitcoin MYK a lot like Tether. And what I mean by that, you might see Tether pop up on several different blockchains, right? But it's Tether, right? It's backed by the U.S. dollar or it might be backed by gold. What is Bitcoin MYK? Where's the value from it coming from? Well, here's one thing you need to keep in mind. Universal basic income is a mass adoption vehicle. What's more likely to happen is uh, through our research, we find that about 80% of the globe is going to opt for universal basic income. And the one thing that we've never come in touch with through all our research is we've never seen a multi-million person platform or network that had a value of zero, right? So there are tremendous value in social media, and that is because communication was one of our most important things throughout history. And all the internet is is a larger network of communication, right? And so that's why expanding and building this project and having a lot of people uh, is so very important, and without with very little marketing, we've we've already got over six thousand low-level KYC accounts, and there are over fifteen thousand accounts operating over multiple exchanges. Um, so very very interesting how big this product can grow. The problem with many cryptocurrencies is that I don't think they quite understand or get that. Oftentimes, it's going to be general, uh, the average Joe who's going to make a platform valuable. It's not going to be a well. It's not going to be an institution. But it's going to be people who uh, use this every day, who, just the average common person. A lot of what drove the stock market's uh, value were retirement accounts. And where did the retirement accounts come from? They came from regular average working Joes who wanted to have a peace of mind and some value when they retire. And so they would get these fund managers and these fund managers would take their money and put them in the stock market. And hopefully in 20, 30 years, they have something to retire off of. This was all done through a custodial capacity. Now again, custodial capacity is a problem in cryptocurrency. How do we get around with this? Well, one big problem with any type of custodial capacity is going to be relative to fraud and people who are making promises that they shouldn't be making and breaking the law or skirting around the law. So the first way we approach this is first we say, 
you don't have to buy Bitcoin MYK. It is works on a proof participation model. It is just important as us as you participate, as you spend money in the markets, trading with one another who find the cryptocurrencies valuable. Uh, we would uh, rather that there be participation inside the uh, communities itself and, and us transfer value between each other. Now, um, because participation and networks create a natural value, money is going to transact through there. So you're going to be able to create money just from joining. Now, in the case you want to create more money, uh, that's probably when centralized finance comes in. But maybe you want to do it on a maybe safer term. So very briefly, and we're going to do videos in the future about centralized finance. We're not going to really go 100 percent in it, but we're going to give you a general idea of it. How is it going to work? So first of all, what generally happens and how is it going to be free? So the reason we, we're calling it free centralized finance is because first you can get the universal basic income coins, you can sell them on the market, then you could go buy the centralized finance coins with them, right? Which again, are probably going to be like an NFT. Let's say each one is, is running for a dollar. So when you buy one for a dollar, what's going to happen is we're going to take that money and every dime of it's going back into Bitcoin and YK coin. But every coin that's purchased from the uh, management of the funds will be burned. So not, no, none of the money, none of that will go out the window into somebody's hands or something like that. It, it will go back into the, the token itself, right? Now, what happens to the person who's bought this? How did they, how did they get value from it? So this is a very interesting circular system we're creating. So what will happen is every month, we will increase their, um, the uh, kind of think of it as a, a stable coin, if you will. Let's say you buy it at a dollar, come back 30 days later, it's at a dollar 30, right? So it is moving up, but it's not just like these erratic jumps, it, it stays okay. What you will be able to do is you'll, you'll have two options. You can try to sell it on the market like you sell a stable coin or something and, and, and try to get whatever price you can or you'll be able to redeem it with us but here's where we're able to, to cover the basis with this instead of promising returns and saying hey you're gonna make this or that what we're what we will be doing is redeeming these tokens will be redeemable in Bitcoin NYK's market value right um, and it, the market value would be calculated over a 30 day period and we should take we'll be able to take that market value from the Bitcoin MYK token and redeem them to equal out to be whatever your dollar was. So in a sense, what's happening is you're, you're doing centralized, you're doing the centralized finance, you're doing it free. And in many cases, you're getting the token itself free just by joining the UBI program or registering with the site, participating, adding value to the network, right? So it's a very circular system. So I think it's gonna be very interesting and very fun. We're gonna do some upcoming videos on it. We think you're gonna like, but that's a general idea of it that's gonna keep uh, uh, repeating this cycle, the cyclical loop. And uh, uh, people might say, well, yeah, that feels kind of pyramidish, kind of punzish. Well, first off, the first part is, does it cost a dollar a dime to do it, right? Uh, we, we, from what we can see, since we've launched our U, UBI, we gave away millions of coins. There's still value in our markets. There's still uh, a, a value to the coin, and there's still a growing network and a platform. So it has not diminished any of that, right? So that first part of it doesn't create value. There's no value. We could tell you that that is completely false. The second part is. Um, uh, because we're able to redeem in something we have, the Bitcoin and YK coin, so it won't be like um, you're making promises of interest you can't, um, that you're unable to, uh, 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 you know, pay out, right? So that's one problem with Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, they're not able to pay out uh, the returns. And so because they're not able to pay out the returns, it all crashes down, right? With DeFi, they're not able to keep up 
the uh, the uh, unobtainable returns, 600% a month, 1,000% a month. And so that's why they have to go from one to another. This is where social media comes from. If you can imagine how Facebook uh, went all the way up to about nearly a trillion dollars, now $700 billion. Think about it, you can grow a network so vast, so important to people like universal basic income, that you could create a social platform uh, worth hundreds of billions of dollars, right? You can see how this will be a place for these this value to come in. Now, we don't promise any returns with centralized finance. We would hope that the social dynamics would uh, grow, drive people to it and creating a system that, uh, that we believe has a future and is going somewhere that is going to help uh, human beings and, and be important to people who uh, don't even care about cryptocurrency. Like our project brings in a lot of people who don't know anything about cryptocurrency. So that's good for our growth and value. And something like centralized finance, I think in the future, what we're doing is going to be able to help them to get involved without knowing much about cryptocurrency, right? Much like the fund managers did with retirement accounts and individuals uh, getting involved in the stock market in the early days of the markets. So this is very important. I think this is what cryptocurrency is missing because I, I think we're trying to tell a narrative that sounds good in theory, but just doesn't quite play out uh, like that. You know, most systems, especially new ones, uh, uh, require some type of process evolution in which things change gradually that they don't just land spot at ground zero so uh i, I think we're gonna have to you know some of our biases and uh, about what decentralization should look like i think we need to change them some people believe it should look like total automation and my problem with that is oftentimes we still end up with a concentration of power and money into the hands of a few. So there's obviously no decentralization of wealth or representation, centralization of mining or anything like that. Whereas we tend to focus more on the decentralization of the wealth and participation. And I, I think just my personal opinion in the end, that's what's more important, right? Than, than some of these other aspects of these false ideas of decentralization but i'd love to hear you guys opinions about it. if you have any questions about centralized finance what we're doing let us know about it we will love to go into detail with you about it but going to be some explanation videos coming up real soon over the next week or so uh maybe maybe this week we'll, we'll see but i think you guys are going to really like it if you haven't joined already make sure you join our project bitcoin myk get your wallet here it's free it's free and easy to get Get some coins, and you're really going to like this project. But that's all I got to say in this video. If you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, as always, take care.